Okay, hello, this is Dr. Janes, and today I'm going to uh, talk about the uh, Teensy Duino uh, 4.0. It's got a screaming fast clock speed of 600 megahertz. And um, I'm interested in building um, frequency generators for uh, special mad science projects that I'm working on. Uh, specifically, I want to build a, uh, you know, this is fast enough to, uh, with, with uh, the fast read, I've done some other videos using the fast read and internal clock and I'm going to combi combine those two into uh, this this video to show you how we can uh, use the internal clock which is going to be very accurate and will allow you to multitask and do other things while the oscillator is generating, generating a high frequency and um, use the fast read so you can the, the slowest procedure on this is the analog read because it takes a very long time to uh, has to keep on doing a bunch of comparisons and, and resampling and and then if you do a bunch of averaging and everything else it will slow down like nobody's business so anyway uh, I'm doing fast averaging I'm doing distributed averaging I did a video on that on how I can just do my own averaging over uh, you know do do one average and then let the computer run do some other things and then do another average and with uh, all those processes, I'm able to get 510 kilohertz, which is fast enough to drive a lot of Tesla coils even. And so you could use this for a Tesla coil, solid state Tesla coil driver, or high power audio devices, which I'm planning to build a multi-frequency generator. That's why I want to go to the, uh, the clock, the internal clock, so I can multitask. But anyway, I'm going to show the algorithm and the operation of this device on some oscopes, and it should be interesting. Let's get going. Okay, so here we have our Teensy Duino, and I was just testing it with my little nano scope here. Um, I have and combined the uh, internal clock read and the fast uh, digital uh, analog read. I'm sorry, fast analog read algorithms to create a very robust uh, tunable digital oscillator. Look at that. Okay, of course you can change, you know, the, whether it's coarse or fine, how you tune this guy by uh, changing the offsets and other things in the counters. But, uh, actually, let, let me hook it up to the other scope, because I like the other scope a little bit better in some ways, because it tells you the frequency where uh, this one, this is convenient and portable, but it doesn't measure the frequency for you. But very cool, huh? I'll go through the um, oops. I'll go through the algorithm in a second after I do that. Okay. Okay. okay so now I have my um, other scope hooked up, my Regal scope, and uh, I'm putting a signal into it, and the signal is live. Let me see if I can twiddle with the, the knob down here. Shoot. Okay. So see, you can ch change the frequency live. And uh, I have the cursor set up to measure this guy, and it looks like it is uh, pretty fast, 510 kilohertz. So this is using the internal clock, um, which is nice because you can do multitasking when you do that. And I'm planning to build a multi-frequency uh, generator, using this to generate more than one frequency at a time. That should be interesting. That'll be a future project. And um, when I do things at high speed, and this is pretty high speed, right? 510 kilohertz. Very cool, huh? Okay, so next we'll look at the, uh, the algorithm and see how that works. Okay. Okay, so here is my sketch. And I'm just going to go through and explain what's going on here. So this is uh, the ADCL T4 library, and this is the only library that I was able to get to work with the fast sampling, so you need to include that. And I have a video that shows how to set this up. If you look at my uh, Arduino videos, the playlist or whatever. Or maybe I'll, maybe I'll put a link in this video too. Um, <clears throat> and you have to declare the object the ADCL object so you can use it. And um, this is part of 
the next algorithm that I'm using, the internal clock, where I have to uh, tell it how many cycles, clock cycles, it's going to uh, wait till it transitions. We have our signal is going to, you know, transition, transition up, and then transition down. And so, and I'm going to make that symmetric. It's going to be a 50% duty cycle uh, oscillator. And so. Uh, it has to read what this. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. It has to read what the current cycles are, and then it calculates how many cycles it's going to wait until it transitions. So the the, the clock is always ticking internally inside of this uh, Arduino device here. Okay. But um, so we're going to measure where we are in time right now. Measure the time right now with the next, or with the cycles. Let's move this cursor out of the way. So we're going to measure where the time is right now in the cycles, and then we will uh, calculate how many uh, clock cycles we're going to wait till the next transition. So that's next cycle, and we want both of those to be long integers because uh, we don't. What's going to happen is the clock's going to loop around and go back to zero, and it will go loop around quicker if you have a, a sh shorter integer. So we 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 want this. You could get errors when it loops around. It's annoying. You have to check for that. So anyway, it's better if you have it longer. Then it only loops around like every few seconds or so at these uh, 600 megahertz clock speed. Okay, to um, toggle the output on and off, we're going to use a boolean. I'm going to call it P out, and I'm going to start it with a low. And then uh, I'm using multipliers to. Uh, it, w it would actually oscillate too fast if I, um, or I wouldn't be able to. Um, Basically, this is the shift. I have a, uh, a potentiometer on here, and I'm going to shift the output to the lowest frequency that I want by adding extra cl multiplying clock cycles in there. So the, the fastest it can go is uh, how fast it can do these reads with no delays. And then when you start putting delays in, then that will determine how s the slowest frequency you're going to get. And so this is going to be delays added into our um, uh, clock cycles to get lower frequency. So if you change this, you'll get a different lower frequency setting. And you could, if you want a different higher frequency setting, then you could put in a, a constant delay. So this is a multiplier, so you'd have a multiplier, and then you could put just a, a constant extra delay if, if, if you don't want it to go up to 510 kilohertz. If you want it lower, you could add in just some padding. Anyway, so uh, our LED output is going to be on pin 13, which is, uh, if you look at this guy here, pin 13 is all the way to the right here, is where I was putting the scope trace in here. I'm reading up on these pins over here with the analog uh, potentiometer, right? Uh, like 20 something, 23 or something, and then using these pins out here for digital outputs. Okay. So, um, Let's see, num. I forget what num's used for. Oh, anyway, uh, CTL. That that might have been actually counters for my other loop that I'm not even using. So the, these variables, I think, might be might need to comment them out. So um, in order to, I found if I didn't do averaging at all, then I'd have some jitter because every once in a while the uh, analog to digital converter in this guy would read a, uh, a value that's way out there and it would cause lots of jitter in the signal. And so I started doing averaging, but uh, over each clock cycle, like normally when you do an analog read, it will just sit there and it'll average, 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 and it'll lock up the processor so that you can't do anything else. What I'm doing is I'm letting it just do one read and then I go through the loop and let let the processor be freed up to do other things and then I'll do another average and remember what it was last time and so I'm created all these variables so I just take one average each loop through and then I average the last 12 loops through and so I can keep a running average and then it doesn't keep the, the, um, the uh, microprocessor in the TNC Duino locked up and we can be free to do other things while still keeping lots of averages Okay. And uh, there's different ways to designate which pin is the analog pin out. 
you can tell it specifically the pin on the Arduino device or you can tell it the internal pin and then in this case I'm telling it the internal pin A9 which is uh, uh, analog in pin. Okay, analog in is where we're putting our signal in here and uh, that translates to pin like 23 I believe on, on the Arduino device. Yeah, see 22 is over there, 23 is not labeled but it's pin 23 which corresponds to A9 internal. Okay, so in order to set up the internal clock this is under void setup we have to do these these particular commands here to um, get the internal clock set up to run so we can sample from it and here I'm setting the analog input pin to what we defined it up here A9 and the analog output pin to LED which is defined as uh, 13 up here okay so this is the input and the output pins defined and uh, these are commented out. Ignore those. I'm going to use those later when I do multi-signal. Here is the setup of the fast analog to digital converter and we're setting the clock speed the high averaging to only one. Now remember we're doing our own averaging as it loops around through the different uh, cycles but every time it takes one uh, a sample it's just averaging once on its own so it'll minimize how much the processor is tied up there. Um, conversion speed medium and sampling speed again you could play around with these maybe you can optimize them a little bit more this is the settings that I used okay and then we're gonna read the current clock cycle okay and then to start the whole thing off we're gonna do an analog read okay and because we need to get a value for our first sample the analog read and then we're gonna calculate the next cycle based on where we are in the cycles plus the analog read times a multiplier. Remember I said the multiplier is the shift to the lowest frequency because you know if this is zero you're just gonna go as fast as you can the next clock cycle. All right? But uh, if you want to go down to lower frequencies you're gonna add some kind of uh, multiplier by whatever you measure B on your twiddly knob here okay so the bigger the multiplier the lower the frequency it will go to and like I said you could add a constant in here if you didn't want the fastest frequency to be number of cycles if you want it to be slower than that okay and then we're gonna command that is digital the digital write state okay so this is the end of our this is the end of our setup right let's see void setup and then we'll go into the loop and the loop we're going to read the current uh, clock cycle on our Arduino. So this is the internal clock. We're going to read the internal clock on this guy. And uh, then we're going to see if we have exceeded our next clock cycle. So basically, have we um, gone past where we're supposed to switch from a high state to low or low state to high? But, but it's also possible that we went off the top because the long integers are only so long and we start back down at the bottom and if that's the case then this number will never exceed number of cycles because if we, if we missed you know if we're, we're heading toward the the limit of our um, uh, integer and if if this next clock cycle is right near the end of it and we sample right after it we're gonna miss it and then we're gonna have to loop around and wait several seconds before it comes up again so this checks, oh, did we, did we miss that? Did it go back to zero and start counting up again? And if so, because I, uh, this number would be very large and in the wrong direction, right? And so what I did is, uh, I believe it's about four million something that the, uh, the long int goes up to, and so I took half of that, which would be about two million. So if, if, if the difference between these is like two million, then you're you're way out of the ballpark, and you need to you've you've missed your place where you're supposed to transition. So let's transition now and start over. Okay. So if either of these cases is is true, where it needs to do the transition, we're going to do our averaging. And again, in order to keep the averagings, we have to take uh, the last 
B10 and shift it to B11, B9 to B10, shift them up through the ranks and let the, the last one fall off the end and then we're going to take a new sample at the very bottom for B. So we'll have 12 samples and we'll average those 12 samples. We'll set B equal to the 12 samples after we've shifted them all up and taken a new sample. So we'll average the last 12 samples and use that to calculate our next clock cycle. Again, next clock cycle is cycle plus our offset which is determined by our uh, potentiometer here. Okay, so when we change the potentiometer we can change the frequency. Okay, so we're going to set next cycle. We're going to, since we've determined that it's time to transition, we're going to say P out is equal to not P out. So whatever, if it was high, it's going to change it to low. If it's low, it's change it to high. And so then we'll do a digital write with that. And that is the end of our loop. So then after it completes this cycle, you're free to do other things while you're waiting and checking to see if you've exceeded your clock cycle. So again, the main parts of this loop are measure if it has a clock cycle, if so, transition. And then, then you're out of the loop and you can do other things and then you can add other things down here if you want. I'm not, you know, this is how I'm going to do my multi-frequency uh, generator because I'll have it check for the next frequency then. But, or you can do other things while it's waiting for that. Just as long as you keep on having it check back to see if if it succeeded its clock cycle periodically so you can keep the oscillator going. Okay. Anyway, that is the end of our sketch here and it seems to be working. It seems to be very fast and um, I think we'll have a lot of applications for this. Very cool, high-speed total digital oscillator that's capable of driving high-power audio devices or even Tesla coils. It has that high frequency. Anyway, very cool, huh? Anyway, this is Dr. Jaynes, and thanks for watching.